Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, it's Alex, it's the Ramble, and it's another week of programming starting at mid- until midnight tonight. Yeah, I got it right now. So ladies and gentlemen, that's my former producer and I would hope best friend in the whole world, Albert Reynoso. I could be that. I could know, be, be my best friend because, you know, I, my last best friend died. But this and don't think this is a curse. I think you're the one that will outlive me. You know, but you never know. You know how <laughs> I don't know how to take that. How old are you now? Sixty. Sixty. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Shecky was sixty-seven. You know. I think I got seven more in me, at least. You got seven more in you. Okay. I don't know. I could wake up every morning worried about this. You know, I'm I'm in that cusp. You know where every time you go to a doctor, they want you to do another test because they're looking for whatever's going to kill you. So, you know. I don't know. I haven't been to a doctor in three, four years. Really? Yep. Yeah, I mean, they, I, got, I got one doctor. He wants me. I had. A, they found a couple of spots on my lungs that were nodules. Mm-hmm. One of them had been the same size for like seven years, and that, that, that kind is always considered benign if it hasn't grown in seven years. Uh-huh. And the other one was a, a kind of nodule that everybody gets, and they can grow, and they can do all kinds of things, but they're not they're very seldom, if ever, malignant. So he says, oh, well, go get another test in six months. Well, why? You know, he just sent me a thing. I've been waiting a month to make an appointment. Why do more radiology on me? You know this isn't, but he does, you know, they... They, they don't want to take any chance of getting sued if somehow they didn't tell you to do that. And I'm sick of it. You know, I'm just sick of it. I, I, uh, I would rather die not knowing what I had, you know? So now he can sue you if you don't take his he advice. He can sue me, yeah, yeah. Maybe, that, maybe this is the new malpractice. Mal, yeah. what would you call that? Mal, mal, uh, well, I... Mal, mal advice? Mal, uh, uh, I don't know. Something. Mal Bennett, I think it's called. Okay, that's Mal Schwarzman. <laughs> anyway, uh, so uh, you know, so I, I, I uh, you know, that, that kind of bothers me. It's like they're all trying to get you. And then this one doctor told me, oh, you know, I just took a, bl- a blood test on you, and uh, this doesn't look great. So I'm sending you to the Cancer and Blood Associates. So I go to Cancer and Blood Associates, or whatever they're called. And uh, I see the doctor, the, the doctor they recommended. He's the big doctor there. And they try, they draw blood out of me, and they take forever to draw the blood out of me. They had to stick me like five times before they could get any blood. So if you're the blood, cancer and blood specialist, shouldn't you be able at least to know how to draw blood? They had three different people trying me, and I'm sitting there while they're going, blank, blank, you know. You know. Uh, and finally they got the blood out of me. So then I go see the doctor and he checks me and I say, well, there's this thing that I was sent to you for where the doctor, the certain blood test came back higher than it should have. And he said, oh, that's nothing. But we're going to test all your blood stuff and, and we'll let you know. Well, come Monday, I don't hear anything. Tuesday, I don't hear anything. There's, when, a month later, I don't hear anything. Yes, they won't let you know. And two months later, I get a call. Oh. from his office, from his nurse, saying, uh, the doctor would like to see you for a follow-up. And I said, is this mandatory? She says, oh, no, no, it's not mandatory at all. He just would like to see you for a follow-up, right? More money, right? Yeah, but did you tell him that you never well, told me what I the results I were? said, you never called me back to tell me what the results of my blood tests were. And I had already gone on to Medicare, and I saw that they had charged. He charged $5,000 for the one visit to Medicare. Billing is the first operation they per- perform. 
billing is the first thing they do. By by the way, you're right because they had they did all the blood on site, and by that Monday they had already billed Medicare. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So anyway, so she, I said to her, I said, I never got a call from the doctor on the results of the tests, and uh, uh, she gets back. And she says to me, Oh, well, that's probably because they, I'm sure that's because they were all fine and he didn't feel there was any reason to call you. And I went. So why are you calling me now? To come in again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I never got any kind of result on that. I do know that I didn't, didn't have anemia, but I had a low platelet count. They told me that that day. And that was the last I ever, that was while I was there. But I never heard from them again. And 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 uh, they wanted $5,000 for Medicare for an hour, less than an hour visit. And That's with blood? Yeah, 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 but they got only twelve hundred, I think. Well, you know, I gave you it, this uh, this advice when we were working together. If it, yeah, it, it, tell if, them the. If there is no pain, and you're not bleeding, you don't need to go to see the doctor. Yeah, yeah, because I'm sure if at my age they test me for enough stuff, they're going to find stuff wrong. Okay. Yeah, the nodules are there. One of the the, pro the first one was probably from some kind of cold or something I had, and the other one was some other reason. But it wasn't. It, it almost is never malignant. So what's the big? Why do you want? Why do I have to go get another? Uh, you know, dose of radiation from the CT scan. You know, well, there I, is a positive aspect to this thing. What's that? And it's that you. You get out of the house. It gets you out of the house. It gets so. me out of the house. It's That's just, a good thing. Well, Mar I think Marjorie looks at her doctor's appointments as a, as a social occasion. You know. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, last time we were talking about racism and about, uh, what, what, but I still didn't come up with what is, uh, what amazes you in the eighty-three years you've had that's been a development. And I, I would say, or, the, or not a development. Well, the curse, the 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 advantage and the curse, is I think the advancement in computers. I think I would have to lay it, but it it has its negatives because rather than use it to, oh, I don't know, cure cancer as an example, or or to get your doctor to call you back. Uh, and it should because it should come up and say call Alex back with his results and it should right. come up on his screen but it, apparently it doesn't Instead, don't you have an online thing a my file my medics something where you can check it online they don't do that uh, yeah but this is a doctor who wasn't part of Mount Sinai no oh. see and they don't I can't go to his thing and get my results right all I know is that when I went to Medicare I saw the tests were taken and I mean, there were like 25 blood tests, hmm. you know. Uh, and at, at my age, you're going to find something. I think if they dig, uh, not even deep, if they dig, dig moderately enough, they'll find something in everybody. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I mean, hey, I'm 83. That's good. Maybe I'll make it to 93. Probably oh, you'll make it to 93. What? So the, the computers, you said, uh, are, are amazing, but they have their downside. Well, no, the downside is human beings who use them yeah, for right. the wrong... Well, the human beings are always the downside. Who use them for the wrong purposes. Yeah. And what do you think, if, if looking ahead, what do you think will be the result? Will we, will we be able to utilize them more efficiently and not abuse computers for nonsense I think we're going to I think we're going to continue to abuse them yeah? I okay. think you're going to get robocalls I think uh, you know I consider that one of the biggest invasions we have you know you, my phone used to ring and I went who's going who's that going to be you know and now I most of the time I look down and it says spam you know uh -huh. it says robocall uh you know, so I mean, uh, it's just that we take computers and we use them for all the wrong stuff. You know, so. And that's not going to be helped by AI, I guess, huh? Well, now that's the other thing. I'm so sick of hearing about AI. Are you? I'm not sick of it. 
I, I'd like to, you know, I'd like to get past the stage where we don't really know what it is or what it's going to do. Everybody's uh, concerned that it could be a real big danger to humanity, but I, I, I I'm not concerned about that. At, no, at, at, not, I don't. I don't think it's it's developed enough to be. AI has been here for quite a while. It just suddenly one day somebody said AI, and all of a sudden it's a big story because they're using AI to do this. Because somebody came up with a program, this uh, chat, uh, what is it, chat? G a GBT. GBT, uh, you know, where you can have it write something for you. So, you know, that that's not the end of the world yet. You know, that's not the... Say as, it, as it progresses, as it evolves, it will become smarter. And, you know, you have the the Terminator scenario that people uh, are th think might happen. Even Elon Musk thinks it'll well, happen. Well, you know what's uh, interesting about science fiction movies is we everything that happens in our lives now, we relate to science fiction movies. Oh, AI, it's going to take over. You know, For Colossus, the Forbin Project is here. Uh -huh. You know, that kind of thing. And, and the point is that I don't see AI as anything else but another tool that you can use, and you can either use it for good or you can use it for bad. So and you don't think it'll be developed to a point where it's ever going to be? Oh, oh, I think no. I think it can, aware. I, I think it can definitely put people out of work. I think. Oh, that's do, that's that's but, clear. Yeah, because uh, uh, that's what we use things for. I mean, mm -hmm. eventually, I don't know where people are going to get jobs. You know, because I mean, AI AI cannot write a promo better than I can or you can. Okay? Know about that. Oh, I've, I've done it. And it's it's good. It's terrific. You know, it has its... It, 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 it works. But it doesn't... It, it, there's something missing. And I guess it would be that human factor. You know? Hmm. I mean, there is a human factor in everything we do. And if it's AI, it's not exactly human. You know, it's doing it by a set of parameters. But it's not developed, I don't think, that much at this point. Well, well I mean, unions... Very are, early development right you, now. Our unions, for instance, are striking over this issue. You know? The the, uh, the SAG and AFTRA union? Yeah. I mean, they're all worried about this, that this is going to be a, a real uh, a problem for them. You know, so, I mean, I don't know. You know, I mean, I, I, I don't, oops, come on. <laughs> I was trying to adjust my light because as the day happens, the light comes in from the window mm -hmm. and I have to use my lights to adjust for it because this half of my face is a little lighter than this half of my face. But anyway, so, oh, I see, that's the one that I have to bring up. Okay. Wait a minute, hold on a second, I'll change my, here, AI could do this for me much better than I can do it for myself. It would have been, there we it go. Would have been done already. Hmm? It would have been done already. Yes. But anyways, I mean, I just think that AI, they're, they're, they're too worried about it. I think, I don't think AI for yet can replace actors. I don't think AI and, and Yeah, but you say, you say yet. Well, I mean, um, I can I can replace a performer right now, and not it's not AI; it's using CGI, and uh, we have some performers that aren't human. Uh, you look at a picture like uh, Avatar, the second one especially. Most of it was animated. You know, mm -hmm. it was it was it was the actors played their roles out, and then they were captured, and then the character was laid in over them. But you still had to have the actor there to act out the part. Oh, no, I know. I, I, I think I read something. I think it was Tom Hanks that said that he'll be around in movies forever now because they can they can use him whenever they want. They can recreate or, or it will be available soon that they can recreate him in whatever scene they want to. Do you want to use Tom Hanks? I don't know. <laughs> well, look what they look what they did with uh, on. Um, what is what is the Star Wars one with the Baby Yoda? What's uh, the name of that show? With the Baby Yoda, 
Yeah. Um, uh, uh, a Mandalorian. Mandalorian, right? Look what they did with uh, with Carrie Fisher at the end of one of one of the episodes. You'd, you'd think she was acting on her own there, and she was dead at that point. Yeah, yeah. So interesting. Yeah, they, they, and they were using. Uh, well, and that was early. They, uh, the Mandalorian. They were using uh, Mark Hamill. That's right. Yeah. It, you know, they had a Mark Hamill who remember, was yes. yeah, CGI, and he mm-hmm. it looked it looked almost real. Almost, it's still a little, little touch off. Yeah, know. but what are, what is it going to be like in twenty years? Um, well, um, imperceptible. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I mean, we, you know, you could in the next century make a Tom Cruise movie. I'm sure they will if you wanted to. Well, maybe not. You're right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> now, what's this going to do for, you know, for actors? You know, but for I just don't. I just don't think it's. People are getting too hyped up behind it because the news has been, oh, here's our AI story for tonight. I mean, NBC did a whole week of AI. Yeah, but they're getting hyped up about it because, I mean, you just said they can, it can replace actors in 20 years. Do we wait 20 years until the actors have been replaced and then scream, oh, why didn't we do anything? Or, you know, or do we have Biden have his uh, uh, meetings about AI now? Well, but, 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 but you're, you're, you're trying to impose upon a technology where it's going to be in 20 years, and you don't know. You don't, you're right. You don't know. But don't, do you put the, the possible stop gaps in place now, or do you wait until the trouble has well, happened? Do you know what the stop gaps are? No, you don't, but you can, you can make assumptions. You're assuming. May happen, this may happen, this may happen, but, and then you've covered your bases. But you're assuming. Well, that's what you have to do when you prepare for things. Yeah, I just say that wait for it to be a problem and then do something about it. Don't don't suddenly go apoplectic over it like that's, they are now. That's what I thought I was hearing, and now you've clarified it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. If it's a problem, then we deal with it. Exactly. What about global warming, or what do they call it now? Global climate change. I mean, climate I, and change. I, I, mean, I should care whether. AI is going to replace me. I'm retired. So, you know, how's it going to replace me? Yeah, you don't care about AI because you're retired. You don't care about climate change because it's going to take a good 20, 30 years Here's before that. Here's the part I don't get. It just hit me. You're just skating now, aren't you? Well, I'm, we've, we've kind of exhausted this topic. Yeah, okay. But let me tell you something that really, really has gotten me about my profession. You remember we worked, I think when the last time you and I worked together was on a New Year's Eve at, uh, what was the company? At, uh, uh, W-O-R. W-O-R. Clear Channel. Oh, Clear Channel. Well, it wasn't, by that time, I think it was, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I Heart Radio by then. I Heart Radio, yeah. right, yeah. And, and we worked the show. And uh, I went home, and uh, do you think I ever saw a check for that? I doubt it. I should have. I'm union. Oh, according to the union rules. Yeah, I yeah, guess. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I sh- should I have gotten a check? Never got a call about where do we send the check? Or how Did do we you spell a grievance name? with the union? What's the, what, what <laughs> grievance? You know? So Hell, I wasn't even with the union. I wouldn't have gotten a dime out of it. Now, recently I did a thing at, uh, at, um, um, what's a, a What's that religious organization? Um, yeah, I know some uh, AM station there. Uh, you know, well, it was, um, oh, I'm trying to remember which station it is now. See, I'm just completely out of it. Uh, but it's uh, um, uh, Salem Broadcasting right. here in New York. So I went in, I did replace this guy for a night, right? I think, the, how long did I do? I think I did an hour. All mm-hmm. I did was an hour. Uh, and I went home. Do you think I've ever gotten a check for that? Do they pay anybody anymore? But do you say anything when they say, hey, would you, would you come in and do something? Do you say, oh, yeah, sure. No, but do, who do I speak to at the business department about my check? Do you, do you say anything? You don't say anything. I right? think I didn't because it's such a small amount of money that I would rather complain about it. Well, and have then something you to a good job. About then, with you, you get a lot of, then you're getting a lot out of it. Yeah. But uh, do you think they would have sent me a check? 
I don't think they considered that you were going to be paid for it. See? See? Now, wait a minute. I'm a broadcaster. I belong to the union. I don't know what their relationship is to the union. Probably not involved. Well, it may be. It may be not. I don't know. But I do know WOR was union, and they should have certainly asked me, you know, first of all, they should have asked me, are you union? And, and then they should have asked me, where do we send the check? Well, my next question is, where does the union stand on you doing this podcast? Well, they don't stand anywhere because they have not done nothing to unionize podcasts. Hmm. They completely let them that roll over them. Do you know of any of anything the union does for people doing podcasts? I've never heard of anything, no. No, I haven't either. So, you know, um, there's another place our union has let us down. Once they saw podcasts were happening, they should have tried to unionize podcasts. Hmm. How do you do that? Hey, I'm not the union. Hey, that's not your job, right? It's not my <laughs> job. Figure it's it out. It's the job, right. Figure it yeah. out, you know. And since I'm running my own shows on my own channel, do I have to abide by union rules and send myself a check? Hmm. You know? Very so, interesting. So that maybe, has maybe. You, you just brought it up. I hadn't thought about it. They don't cover podcasts, and the fact is, that's where most broadcasting is today. Maybe you'll be fined by the union for doing a show on your own. How about you work at, uh, let's say, WABC in New York here, mm -hmm. and then they put your show on on the Internet as a podcast, okay? Do you get paid Which for, is often done. Do you get paid for that? No, the yeah. union's never negotiated that. Hmm. Where's our union? They're totally inefficient. Maybe it's a thing of the past. It's all all a part of the past. I mean, yeah. you know, this is where broadcasting is going. And people, people, you know, they have their podcasts they listen to, and that's it. Well, it's it's as broad a cast as you can get. It goes all over the world. It goes all over the world, but it's still called narrow casting. It's not narrow casting. No, it's, it's not. It's as broad as possible. No, people can hear this anywhere in the world right now. Mm hmm okay. Why I only have a couple of thousand, I have no idea. I should have a couple of million. Because there's so much out there that people want to listen to. Oh, well, how many podcasts are there? I think at last estimate, there are 30,000. I'd be surprised if that were the, the number and not higher. And not higher? Maybe it's higher. That uh, I heard that a couple of years ago. But, you know, I mean, come on. How do I raise uh, get above the noise? Well, and what constitutes a podcast versus your YouTube channel, you know, versus your, your other yeah, channels? All. Everything's available now. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, the, well, the, the radio, and, radio and television industry is, is a thing of the past. Y yeah, it doesn't really exist No anymore. question about it. And I don't it, know how, I think, uh, I think AM is probably going to go the way of the dodo very soon. Because now, of course, they're not going to put AM radios in electric cars mm -hmm. because they have a problem with the frequency that they have to bring it in on and then how much electricity it uses off the car and uh, they just don't want to the only fm in cars now there's who can, who listens to that nobody listens who wants to, to listen to something with commercials nobody listens to the to the fm radio unless they're forced to also if you if you have internet radio in the car you're not listening to fm radio Nobody cares. That's why they want the podcasts, the radio companies. They want the podcasts well, because the podcasts, they so many of them do run commercials. And of course, they run commercials. They have to make money somehow. Yeah, but how am I supposed to compete against somebody, say, at MSNBC, doing a podcast and getting all that publicity for free from MSNBC? How am I supposed to compete against that? What have I got? I got my old dinky broadcast here. And now every TV host has a podcast. And are they getting paid extra for that? I doubt it. Right, right. So anyway. the problem is not with the people or the business or the or the uh, the industry. Mm -hmm. It's it's with the corporations. Yeah, not and, taking care and, of the people. And you know, when when I first started doing, essentially podcasting, there was nobody out there doing it. You know, very few people doing it. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, as, as soon as it looked like there was money in it, all of a sudden all the corporations are into it. And I get, I get squeezed out. Yeah. 
you know. So, I mean, uh, people do it on their own just for ego. That's it. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. I but, but about but, making money. I'm look at me. I have my own podcast. Yeah. But all of these uh, major podcasts are being sub subsidized by major corporations. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's MSNBC or whether it's Spotify or whatever. So That's right. anyway, hey, you know, it's always a pleasure talking with you because it's just a, it's, Fine as well. it's just a talk, you know. And I'm glad we're kind of doing this on a regular basis because I think it's worth doing. You know? Next time we talk, I'd like to talk, if you can remember this, about toilets in space. I don't know how they do it. I'll tell you how they do it. Yeah. yeah. Save it for next time. How do you do it without space. getting your ass sucked in? Whatever it is, I don't know. I don't understand how it works at all. Yeah, well, and I have a bidet at home. I will, so. look, I will look it up, okay? I'm sure yeah. I can go on to YouTube and say toilets in space and I'll have my answers. Let's okay. figure it out. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that is Albert Reynoso, and uh, lately he's been on about once a week, and I couldn't be happier. You know? And, and yeah. me too. Uh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that's our guy. Thanks, Thanks. for Albert. Bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hello, everybody. How are you? How are you? Hello, everybody. How are you? And how do you do? Okay. Hello. It's um, it's Monday. Oh, it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. It's not Monday. Uh, and uh, uh, we've got just tons of people waiting to come on the program, so we better just admit them right now. Uh, and uh, here they uh, here they come. Let me see here. Okay. Yes. Oh, and oh. it's Charlie Wallace. That's it. Oh, <laughs> Jeff Stein is trying to get in now. Do you think he'll have his audio on? Huh? Doesn't sound like it. Sounds like everything is fine. Everything's fine, Jeff. That's nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's very nice. Yeah. Hello to uh, all both of you. Nice to have you here. Um, uh, is this going to be it for tonight? <laughs> oh no! Here comes what? Right. Here, Let's go home. <laughs> here, 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 here comes Alan. Here comes Alan. Right. Alan is, uh, yeah, coming in here. Okay, and there's Alan. Hello, Alan. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing, Alex? How was your weekend? Uh, my weekend. Uh, it's three uh, days after. It's, sorry. It, you know when you're when, yeah. <laughs> when you're when you're out of work, uh, when you're not working, uh, weekends don't matter anymore. <laughs> You're right. Am I, I right, Charlie? Day of the week, yeah. day. Like today's the 19th. If somebody had asked me that 10 minutes ago, I'd say, I don't know. I don't know. That's right. Who yeah. cares? The only reason I know is because it's right there at the bottom of my screen. And on the, on the what? Everybody just froze up. There they went. Oh, they were, they're back now. Okay. I don't know what happened there. Are you there? Yeah, I'm, oh, okay, here. Okay. I'm here. I just want to make sure we had the audio and everything. It just it just stopped uh, on us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but who cares? Anyway, uh, so um, that, yeah. So I mean, um, uh, week weekend. Simply, all it means to me is that I don't have to do this. Okay, uh, which uh, you know, I guess <laughs> I can say I look forward to, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, part of your social life. Hmm. It's part of Th your. This social is part life. of my social life. Absolutely. God, what has my life become? It works for me. Marjorie's hair has been getting really thin lately. Uh oh. Uh, and so today she went to the barber, and the barber cut her hair shorter than it normally is. And he said the reason it's so thin is that the very ends get very thin when you get older. So he cut it shorter, and it looks great now. And she says, you know, uh, uh, does it make me look younger? I said, well, it's still yeah. gray, <laughs> you know. Isn't so, the answer yes? It, I guess. Yeah, it should be. No, uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah, you, anything that makes them feel good. No, but I, I actually really liked the way it looked. I thought it was terrific, you know, so. Good for her. Good answer. Good answer. Oh, yeah. I'll never forget my aunt and the uncle, my my mother's brother and sister-in-law. They were the odd couple. 
They were both uglier than ugly could be. <laughs> both had no brains, and they were meant for each other. And I remember going with it, and Aunt Sandra probably had a size, I don't know, 50-inch waist. You know, and and you know, and, and she picks up a, a we're in a, a a bathing suit that's made for Farrah Fawcett or something very small. Mm -hmm. She said, "Wouldn't I look good in this?" And he says, "Yeah, if it came in a 20x size or something." <laughs> and she, she got upset by it. I thought, "Well, come on, you're holding up this little." It's like finding me in a speedo. I mean, come on. Well, what you do is you really have to look. Uh, how can I put it? You have to. You have to lie. Life is full of lying. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, if somebody says, uh, do I look fat to you? Uh, you no. You look fine. You look yeah. terrific. You know. I know that every time I say that to Marjorie, she's lying to me. Well, you're not fat. I'm fat. Well, I'm... I'm well, yeah, you are. And the medical, <laughs> yeah. the medical community is so touchy. I said to the doctor, you know, something. I lost a couple pounds. I'm not so fat. Oh, don't use the word fat. Uh, why? You type in your 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 after visit things. Obese. It's the same thing. <laughs> why, why? It's like yeah. Oh, you know, Alan, you got a beautiful full head of hair. I'm yeah. like, come on. You're not. Fa you're yeah. not fat. You're not fat, Alan. You're morbidly obese. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I've heard that. I've seen that in the doctor's things, too. Yeah, yeah. But they won't say but it to your face, though. I don't care. I just, yeah, well. It is what it is, you know? Now, were you always overweight? No. No, I mean, when when I was a cop, I used to get to work a couple hours early, work out in the gym, then go run uh, two to four miles around this lake next to it, and <laughs> come back in and show yeah, I know. I'd be lucky to walk that now, uh, but anyhow, um, the lake's still there. Uh, but yeah, you know, I and you're a cop and you're carrying a gun and you got to arrest people. You can't afford to lose fights, and especially if you're like, okay, I'm really winded. You know, I, I don't want to fight you. I just shoot you instead. Yeah. It, it, you know, it's a. Uh, but after I left there, I blimped out. Did you blimp injured. out because you you said your what your leg went bad or something? I, I yeah, I injured my knee chasing somebody well, over the fences. Yeah. So when you, you know, like, I, I could never go over fences at this weight. I could maybe go through them, but at this weight, I can't go over them. So, yeah. but I was chasing somebody. I went about, over about five or six through backyards, and uh, so the the guy that I was chasing was able to get a farther bounce off the fence. And I landed right on the other side of the fence, and the people had a pile of wooden pallets. Oh, God. I screwed up my knee. And he was laughing. And by that time, he knew it was the police and sirens and stuff like that. And he was laughing on the other side of the, knowing that I couldn't shoot him. I had a gun drawn pointed at him. It was a drug deal, and it had gone bad. But the, the thing that was so good that took the pain away from me was they had a German Shepherd canine that was working with us. And the guy let the canine into the backyard. And this canine, this German Shepherd, grabbed a hold of his testicles. And this guy wasn't laughing anymore. I was, you know, it was kind of cute. Yeah, that was kind of cute. He lost he lost both of them, sued the city, and lost his case and went to prison, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, what What is a, a drug deal gone wrong? I mean, I, I've had a drug deal gone wrong myself uh, in that uh, I, yeah, well, I turned you know, out it was oregano, but, you know. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, well, so. I, th I think it was heroin at the time that was popular, and we were selling heroin, you know, n the narcs. And uh, you know, somebody said to me, you know, I bought I bought some stuff from you last time, and he shorted me and he spit in my face. Well, you know, that's an assault. Let's let's go after him. And I said, I'm a police officer. You're under arrest. And he wanted to go for a run. And I said, okay, let's go for a run. And in those days, I could just almost jump right over a six foot fence. Not today. Right. Oh, no, of course it. not. But and so, so did so did you start to gain weight once you had the accident? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, 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 I that blew out my knee and I wasn't able to walk, and you know, and they kept me around for two years, which was a long time, just in anticipation that maybe I could be useful again. I guess is the way they put it, but it didn't yeah. work out. So, but you get a you get a full uh, disability on that. Yeah. 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 Sort of, kind of. What do you mean, sort of, kind of? 
well, it isn't really a full disability because I didn't have a full number of years. I didn't have the full 30 years. Yeah, but, I mean, let's say you become a policeman, and two years in, you blow your knee out. Well, you know, I mean, what, you've got to wait until 20 years, 30 years later to blow your knee out, and you get more? I mean, shouldn't you? I mean, it's a disability. It's a disability. Yeah. It doesn't matter how many years you've been on the force. Well, they, what, what happened is the reason they kept me around so long is the chief of police owed me a favor. Um, early in my police career, I was on patrol, and I went up to, into a construction area mm-hmm. up a hill, turned my lights off, and walked out with a flashlight. And up there, Lover's Lane, you know, flat piece of land, top of a hill, they're going to build a house. And inside the car is all steamed up windows, and it was his, the, the chief's 19-year-old son, with a 16 year old girl. Oh boy. Oh. Well, they had actually been going, you know, a little history just about, they'd, they'd been going since they were, since he was 16 and she was whatever age she was, you know, they'd, they'd been dating wow. and stuff. So, so, you know, the parents all consented, but I didn't arrest him and uh, it would have made front page news and it didn't need yeah. it. Yeah, you know my my sergeant says you have the right to arrest him. It's a felony, but it's not going to go anywhere. The chief is uh, would be, you know, unhappy, and your probably your career police career here will come to an end somehow. I said, yeah, okay. There are plenty of other arrests. Yeah, in California, they have weird rules about about uh, uh, what do you call it about uh, underage sex. I think they have it everywhere. In the well, country. no. Here's the thing. Let's say you're a guy and you're 15 and she's 14. You've just com- the guy has just broken the law. Uh, in California, it's 18. Yeah, you know, what I'm saying is, the guy still has broken the law because he had sex with a with a even if the girl even if the girl was a year older than him but underage, they could still hit the kid, the guy with it. Uh, yeah, but underage in California and in most states is under the age of 18. 18 no, but what I'm saying uh, is, here's what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, the guy is, uh, uh, the, the guy is, uh, uh, if he four, raped her, four, four, that's a uh, The guy is 14 and the girl is 16. Are they going to go and arrest the girl? No, no, no they're going to arrest, but they can't arrest the guy, the 14-year-old guy. Yeah, for now, what, though? That, that, for statutory rape. No, it's, well, now, if it's rape, yes. No, 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 yes. no. In, this, yes. in, in, the, in those days, I don't know if it still holds true, but statutory rape was any sex with a minor, even if you were a minor yourself. Right, right. If, if it's rape is rape. Even if you were a boy and you were younger than the girl, you were still guilty of statutory rape. If it was rape, if it was forced. Well, no, no, was no, th- no. Rape, rape then, statutory rape did not refer to just rape, rape, okay? It referred to having sex with some with a minor. Didn't have to be, it could be consensual, but it, it was still considered statutory rape. Except for they were either, either that or the other definition is you had sex with Sherman's horse. You know, that's statutory right. rape. So, Statu- yeah. Statuary rape. Absolutely. Okay, well, anyway. Hello, Kevin. Hi, Alex. How are you? How you doing? Okay. Really? You miss out how fat I was? <laughs> no, I was listening. I was listening. I was getting warmed up. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's so fat that when he sits around the house, he sits around the house. Thank you. Yeah. Was that lake that you used to run around of Fremont Lake there? Yeah, yeah. Lake, lake Stevenson. Stevenson. Yep, you know it, don't you? Yep. yep. We used, used to, to do play softball uh, there. On my radio yeah. show in San Francisco, we used to do fat Central jokes. Park. We used to do fat jokes about Monty Hoffman. Uh, uh. And it was like Monty Hoffman's so fat that, you know. Uh, and when he sits around the house, he sits around the house. And then uh, yeah. he's so fat that uh, uh, when he stands on a street corner wearing a red, white, and blue outfit, they stuff mail in his mouth. You know, things like that. Yeah. I don't here, oh, here comes John Larkin. He's down there with all the people who are 
just screwing up the neighborhood, right, John? Wait a minute. There he is. John, how you doing? Hey, what's up? Yeah, how's everything in San Francisco in, in your your neighborhood, the, the Tenderloin, which is ground zero, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty rough. It's falling apart. A lot of, you know, I don't know. It's, it's just filthy. It's so dirty, you know, and it's everything's closing up. People don't, businesses can't stay in business because they just don't want to be around here. I, yeah, I almost sent you an article last night, Alex, on the news. Mm. That it, you know, just like he said, a lot of a lot of businesses are folding, big stores and stuff mm -hmm. and in the upper market area. They're going at Nordstroms, all kinds of stuff going on. And the little guy, they're allowing. You know, the police are not arresting, and the courts are not charging in San Francisco and now in Oakland. Shoplifters, people, these kids come in and just take stuff off the rack, put it in their bag, mm -hmm. and walk out. Well, if, if they don't, if, if, they, if they don't go get them, then that's going to keep going on. You know, absolutely. And, I mean, and they're, I, they're driving the. There's no business for the big businesses, and the small guy can't afford to stay in business okay. with all the, with all the uh, theft going on, and the police stand out there and they don't do a thing. Well, let's say, let's say they arrest every shoplifter that shoplifts. Okay, absolutely. They've then got to prosecute them. Yeah, and that clogs up the courts. So they have well, you, to then, if it's so outrageous, they then have to make a decision, are we going to prosecute these people or are we going to prosecute the more horrible crimes? And yeah. even then, there's no room in the jails, you know? I mean, that's right. They're all the drug dealers, they, the <clears throat> drug dealers, they got to let them go because where do they, there's no, they're nowhere to put them in the, in the jails, you know? It's, well, so what's the answer to the question in San Francisco? I mean, I would say it's start I arrest. Know. I would How say about, you don't know, clog the jail. How about you just, uh, clog the morgue, make it a, make a, make a moratorium. Somebody uh, shop lives or sells drugs on the corner. You just shoot them and then then call the coroner. I'm kidding, yeah. but you yeah. know, I don't know what the answer is. San Francisco doesn't have a large land. It's a city and county mm -hmm. where other counties have a lot of land, and so you just set up tents and and house the the uh, misdemeanor people that are idiots in, in tents. Well, you know, one of the things they really have to go after in San Francisco are the drugs. And the reason I'm saying that is it's the drugs that's drawing the homeless to San Francisco. Because they say the best and cheapest fentanyl in the entire country is in San Francisco. Yes, Kevin. Yes, Kevin. And there's a ton of it. There's a lot of it. It's all over. Kevin, did you have your hand up? Yeah. Yeah. But I guess, you know, I, I hear this all the time, and I, and I I also hear other things. John, if you would, you live there, I know. Um, if you were to go outside the Tenderloin and, you know, go up the street and head towards Golden Gate Park or that kind of area, it's not that bad, is it? Um, It's not that bad, but you, you still find... Um encampments all over you know people just putting up tents and blocking the sidewalk homeless, yeah, homeless no, no, yes. I, he's talking I, about drug deals and, and no, I'm, yeah I'm talking about in drug general I, I think the San Francisco is getting a bad rap what? and and I heard a lot of that you know well I was, was I was in, talking the dead was in uh, <laughs> in town recently and there was a lot of people from out of town and I saw a lot of posts that were saying you know, these people were coming in from out of town and going, you know, we heard a lot of crappy stuff about San Francisco. And I've been through there, too. And I and I hear a lot of crappy stuff about San Francisco. And there, there's no doubt there's a lot of shitty areas that have gotten really crappy. But I like to defend San Francisco because I love that town. Well, I do, too. And there there's a lot of good places in the town as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm tired of people yeah. bashing that town because there's still a lot of places that are really nice yeah, like for instance I, and, I talk to sh and I, I and I'll tell you what yeah. it, it, it's the it's the uh, DeSantis and all these other people that are grabbing onto that and pushing how shitty yeah. it is absolutely and I don't like it at all and quite yeah. frankly I don't like anybody that's grabbing onto it and tailgating off that either it I totally bothers agree. the shit out of me 
Yeah. Because San Francisco is just like any other city, like Philadelphia, like Chicago, like any other big city. They've got their shitty parts, and they've got their drug areas, and they've got their homeless areas, but... San Francisco is just the same as anywhere. There's a Brian, lot of beautiful spots in Brian, San Francisco Brian's, that have no problem. Brian's got his hand up, but before I go to Brian, I was talking to <laughs> to uh, Bubbles the other day, and I said, are you having any problems in your neighborhood? He lives in Cow Hollow, which is right down near the marina. It's a pretty nice area, you know, yep. And even if it's named Cow Hollow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he said uh, there was somebody passed out in front of his door his apartment building just the other day. He said it's 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 moving out to all parts of the city. There are stragglers, yeah, but and I get that, but I don't know. I just don't. Think I know. I I feel. It, I'd like to feel the same way, but I've heard some really distressing things. I'll tell you, the media is building it up worse than it is. Well, d- did you see that deal about where the? Wait, uh, wait a minute. Let me go to Brian because he did have okay. his hand up. Brian, go ahead. I said this last week. You go over to where the Warriors' new arena is, and it's all rebuilt, very beautiful. You go up the street where China Basin is, where the the Giants' ballpark is. It's all beautiful, all brand new. Mm. But you go like we used to. We used to go up on Saturdays. We used to drive up to Union Square and park there. And then you have Nordstrom and Macy's and everything in there. And then we would walk, walk down to Mission, where the mall is that they're you know, kick that everybody's leaving. Mm-hmm. We'd walk like there, there, and all you smell is, and they have Chanel is there, and Louis Vuitton, and all those places right around Union Square, and you walk down the street down to get to the mall, which is maybe five to ten blocks, and that smells like urine. You have people <laughs> sleeping in the street, and you have all that area. So, of course, and I think there are even worse areas than that, and then, that, and then they allow all these tents everywhere, and when you see all those tents in Barcadero and all those areas, they were never like that, you know. So you do have a nice, air, you do have some nice areas, but if all those areas that used to be really nice before are all just, all just they've gotten out, out of hand. hand. And the other thing I think you missed is that they on the the special they're talking about, not just the cheapest fentanyl, but they have the loosest laws there because nobody's arresting anybody and right. everybody's doing it right out in public. I'm not yeah. disagreeing with that part, you know. Uh, but yeah, there are very nice areas, and it's all the new areas. But now all these old areas need to get get cleaned up. What, what, they are what, doing yeah. one thing. The Skateboarders Alliance. There's a community a community group that uh, just is, is signing something that they can take over this area that's underneath the freeways. That they're going to let them do a skate park in there, and they've done that in another couple places where they've been homeless areas, and they've let they've sort of caged it off, let skateboarders they they do all the ramps and everything and graffiti. And it sort of changes some of those neighborhoods. But uh, the um, uh, what's the street that the all the car dealerships used to be on? Uh, Van, Van, Van Ness. I, he- I hear Van Ness is one tent after another, is what I've been told. Well, not so much Van Ness, but um, the businesses Ooh, can't stay, businesses can't really stay in business on Van Ness anymore because there's nowhere to park anywhere on Van Ness. No. You cannot park, so. So no businesses can really stay in business I, there. I don't know if you need to park on Van Ness. A lot of Van Ness, is, they've taken all the traffic out and only allow Muni on it or something. Yeah, they, yeah, that's that's one thing. But nobody takes Muni. That's the it's problem. Literally it's 101. It's yeah. 101 business. And they've yeah. been doing construction there for like 10 or 20 years on Van Ness. Wow. So now now they've got two big bus lanes that go up that are just dedicated to buses, you know. Yep. Yeah. So, but nobody well, takes the freaking buses. If the people would get out of their cars, you know. Are you having a homeless problem in Austin, uh, uh, Charlie? Oh, sure, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Every freeway. Every and, freeway yeah. So what does that say? That says that, that we've got a homeless problem in the United States, and it needs to be addressed. All uh, across. The oh yeah, like the, like this country is going to do anything about okay, it. Okay, thank you. you. Know. I mean, that's you know, you know. I mean, the there was a there trillion was, dollars for defense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. back off dollars on that a little defense, bit. But nothing for the local. Well, I mean, uh, let's face it. I mean, there was a time in this country where we did care a little more about people who had problems like that. You know, is that when we really cared about it? Of course, is when everybody had the problem because there was a. Uh, uh, you know the uh, uh, money problems in this country back in the uh, <coughs> four, uh, 30s. Um, you know, but I mean, it was—it's just uh, 
It's terrible. Well, we're having money problems now too. I mean, there's there's obviously there's an economic problem in the U.S. and and that's obvious. But you know, <clears throat> these people are are in it and they're deep in it and they don't want to come out of it. But they got to have somebody stand there and say slap them in the face and say you need to come out of it. Well, you but know, they don't want you to. know what we're seeing the erosion of is the middle <clears throat> class. That's you know, it. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it, eventually we're going to just have people who are either poor or they're rich. And that's it. It goes back to the old George Carlin thing. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, somebody, who was it that I saw? I think, it was, I think it was maybe Clinton in a speech he was giving. No, it was Obama in this TV show he did about the rich and the poor and the differences and so on. And he said that the one thing that America prided itself on when it became a nation was that there was going to be a middle class that you you know you in in Europe you had the rich and you had the poor and there was nothing in between and they wanted to establish a very firm middle class in this country and it was something we took great pride in but we don't we're we're losing the middle class yeah. it's true no question yeah. about it you know you either got to climb your way up into that lower upper class or you're down in the shithole yeah. And, yeah, and harder and harder to get there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and in San Francisco, how about your apartments in San Francisco now? You know, <laughs> yeah, they're a lot. I mm. mean, <clears throat> you know, for a decent one to two thousand to twenty five hundred, for a one in a you know a nice neighborhood, you're looking three thousand to five thousand. You know, wow. I mean, part of part of the problem is the. The police can't do a lot. I mean, I have friends of mine that are retired from San Francisco, and my cousin is a sergeant in San Francisco, a, a PD. But their, their hands are tied. They said that you know the 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 mayor says we don't want you bothering the homeless unless it's a fight or life threatening, and so on and so forth. And so they're, they're really a lot of hands off stuff that the police would like to get involved in and try and help out the neighborhood, but. You know, they're they're yeah, they're they're hands tied. Yeah. Like one hand tied behind their back and it and it sucks. It's not what these guys want to be guys and girls. Their cops wanna be doing in San Francisco. They wanna be arresting, <laughs> taking people to court. John, how big is your come how, out of the city? How big is your apartment? You're looking at it, this is just the one it's a studio. Mm -hmm. I got I got a um there's a kitchen, a full kitchen mm -hmm. and a bathroom. But that, and it's a studio. Mm -hmm. And it's um, fourteen a month. Your kitchen and bathroom are one and the same. Yeah. Uh, huh. um, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, Bubs has a a, a studio, mm -hmm. but he's had it for thirty five years. Wow. And he's not moving anywhere. Rent control in San Francisco. Well, yeah. I don't know if it's is it rent control in San Francisco? Do they have yeah. that? Yeah. 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 Really. Absolutely. Yeah. Gee, what are Especially all in a, in a big apartment mm -hmm. those are really rent controlled smaller like homes like two unit buildings those aren't so much rent controlled you can kick people out of those unfortunately yeah yeah but i mean it's just it's 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 horrible well it's it's horrible what's happening here in new york too i mean yeah. come on new york uh, you, you you want a uh a, a, a nothing apartment it's going to cost you almost two grand for like a yeah. studio. You know? When I when I first moved to the city, it was like eighty eight, I think, and I was I had a a two bedroom apartment with parking in Potrero Hill with a nice view of the East Bay, mm -hmm. and I lived there until two thousand ten or something like that, two thousand eight, and then these young guys bought the building and they kicked everybody out, you know, they they. But it was it was only a six unit building, so they they had to pay me to get me out. But it was it was only fifty grand, which ain't, it's not a lot, yeah. considering I was only paying eleven $1 hundred a month. Well, now you're you're working at so you still working at the Warfield? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there are they still going strong? Well, I also work at the uh, other theaters too, so I stay pretty busy. What the Curran yeah. and the Gary? <laughs> Uh, or, the uh, uh, not the Gary uh, the, the uh, Orpheum. Orpheum and the Golden Gate yeah and sometimes the current yeah yeah all of Plus, those all of those believe it or not were movie theaters yeah at one yeah. time except for the Warfield my father used to play at the Warfield because what they would do in the old days 
They would show you a movie, okay, and then there was a show. Yeah. And they would have a show that was like a 45-minute show with a live orchestra or whatever. It might be somebody like Spike Jones, or it might be, it might be Tommy Dorsey or somebody, you know? Yeah. And they would do six of those a day, right? And then the movie, a movie and actually, I think, a, a, a companion feature, and then the, the stage show. Uh, and the Warfield was always, always had live performances there. So it's not unusual, but the I remember uh, the um, uh, what are you talking about? Let's see the um, the other Gasco? two, the other or two, the, um, the Fox. Well, the uh, the uh, well, the, well, we can talk about the Fox in a second, but the other two theaters, the Warfield and the Golden Gate, uh, and Go the Orpheum. Golden Gate and the Orpheum. The Orpheum was a movie theater, and the Golden Gate was only a movie theater. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then you had you the Fox. Yeah. which was an amazing edifice. I mean, yeah. it was the largest movie. How many? 5,000 seats, something like that? I, 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 they tore that down so long ago. I think in the 60s, so I don't remember it. Did you ever go to it? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. I went to see movies there when I was a kid. Jesus. In fact, That's awesome. I remember that when Cinemascope first came out, the Fox Theater was showing Cinemascope, so I wanted to see what it looked like, and I, I went there to see uh, The Robe, uh, wow. which was the first movie in Cinemascope, uh, but, and it had a huge curved mm. screen for that. Uh, but, I mean, it was, uh, it was an amazing, amazing uh, uh, theater, and it was beautiful. They had this uh, organ, and all the pipes for the organ were in the walls of the theater. And when they played that thing, the whole place vibrated. Oh, you know? pipe organs. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And it was it was amazing. It was just amazing. Uh, I and, think uh, the last one in the theater right now is in Oakland at the Paramount. Yeah, the Paramount. Uh, yeah. Around the Bay Area. Yeah. yeah. They, they had, had one, so my friend's club, uh, uh, Larkin may, may remember, I'm sure, but it was Ruby Sky. And Ruby Sky used to be a place before is 420 Mason. So I said, 1940s, it became a, o, a USO club called Stage Door. Do you remember that one? Stage Door Theater, Alex? Oh, yeah. No, no. Not at all. Not at all. Ruby Sky is still there. No, 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 it's gone. It's, it's not Ruby Sky anymore. They changed, it got sold like yeah, called August seven Hall. years ago. It's yeah. called August Hall now. Yeah. yeah. Oh. They ruined it. <laughs> Who? Ruby Sky oh. was great. The new people oh, yeah. it looks it's horrible in there now. Ruby Sky was beautiful. Yeah, they're uh, they're very good friends of mine, but they and they sold at the right time though. They sold just before COVID, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're the, still, the uh, Castro, the Castro they're still theater. fighting over the Castro, yeah. Yeah, they're about their oh, really? um, they be uh, the um, they want to turn it into a nightclub, but the locals there don't want them to change it at all. They don't want it. They don't want the theater seats being taken out. Yeah, they want to the Castro Canada. Theater. Oh yeah. Yeah, so they're Always raising in the news. Well, the thing uh, there's a very interesting documentary I watched on YouTube on the history of the movie palaces and how they came to be and what they were and then how they suddenly all died. I mean, the Fox was a perfect example of a movie palace. You went in there, it looked gorgeous. Um, and uh, the only, you know, we have a couple movie palaces left in New York, don't we? Tony, out in your neighborhood, you've got a movie palace, don't you? Uh, Shecky would have known that. I, I remember asking him that. Actually, the only one that I know of, and I asked him, I don't think it's, uh, it's, Alex, what would be a palace? I, we have one old, old theater movie on palaces, Movie palaces are distinguished by the fact that they're really huge. You know, and then they've got all this ornate work on the walls, and well, you know that sometimes they were done to look like. Uh, oh, some of them were in an Egyptian motif; others were in a Roman motif. You know. Well, the one that I remember as a kid that I, I remember exactly what movies I saw that too. I saw Return of the Jedi Jaws. Is was the El It was across the street from where my mom worked on A and S on Queens Boulevard. It was called the Elmwood, and now it, it was like. It's a church now, but it always was big well, inside. You see what happened? I saw big is, there in like '79. Is many, huge. Many, it was yeah. two many of these movie palaces. It was just big. Were bought up by churches, 
Like the yes, one, the, the oldest movie palace in America is on the corner, Caddy Corner, from where I am, and the building is still there, and it was the first movie palace. A guy by the name of Roxy, who okay. is the name you've heard because a lot of Roxy theaters all around. Yeah, they got one here in San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. Roxy uh, took over this thing because it was opened up as a movie uh, movie theater and kind of a palace and then he redecorated it and turned it into this absolute movie palace and it was the first movie palace in America and then he opened up one downtown called the Roxy which was this absolutely huge and then Roxy got together with a couple of other people and they're the ones that built the Radio City Music Hall yeah. which is a perfect that. example of a movie palace because I remember going as a kid, I remember like my mom used to get free tickets sometimes where she worked, the boss used to give me to her. And I remember the, the screen was so big because it only showed two movies at the time. And I actually still remember, my sister, I know what movies I saw there. I saw Superman there, number one. Like, you remember it just being, it was so big. I saw that King yeah, well, that, That's fine. But you go to a real movie palace, it like the Radio screen. City Music Hall. Which has, I, has, I at, think has at least 5,000 seats. And yeah, you saw, go up yeah, to the top so balcony. How big? And the same was true of the Fox Theater. You go to the top balcony and you watch a movie because maybe the place is crowded. Mm. And it's the screen is a postage stamp. That's how big those theaters were. Yeah, I saw the, a couple of Disney movies there in Radio City. I remember that. Radio City was it where all the Disneys played. Yeah, yeah I, I saw Puff the Magic Dragon and a couple others. I distinctly remember my mother taking me there. Like I have that still in my head. I remember going to it and everything. I like, was so excited because it was like bigger than life. Like, wow, this is unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, yes, uh, uh, Ray. We have we have one in downtown Palo Alto, um, really? and they play they play old movies there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, uh, Stanford, the Stanford. It's owned the Stanford by Stanford yeah. Theater. Yes. That's yeah, and, they, and a guy who plays a Wurlitzer before the movies. Yeah. Yeah. And the, 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 but like you say, the funny thing is, is the screen looks like a postage stamp. It's hard to get used to when you're used to the big cineplexes mm -hmm. and the giant screens. They, they do a lot uh, of John Wayne movies and stuff. Like yeah, that. they always have a theme. Like right now, it's Humphrey Bogart. Well, yeah. 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 Do you remember really the? Cool. Uh, do you remember the, go. the new Varsity? Yeah. Yeah, I used to go to that, yeah. see the midnight movies back in the 70s. I saw uh, Eraserhead there. <laughs> okay. That's the one in Menlo Park or the one on... No, uh, no, it was, um, it was on University down by oh, yeah. Littlefield. I spent, my teens, by Littlefield. Yeah. I, I spent my teens living in San yeah. Anselmo. Uh, and the Varsities. But a, a theater, so, there was a theater in San Anselmo uh, and um, the Tamil Pius Theater. And um, I remember that theater as being really pretty large, huge, you know? All the, all the theaters back in those days were big, they, you know? Yeah. People went to movies in those days. Yeah, I don't go to the movies. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, and there would always be a double feature. I used to slip in, so I used to do like you said, I used to slip in, try to time. Well, no, here, here's the difference between going to movies today and, and then. Today you go to a movie, what time does it start? You get there just before it starts so you can see the beginning of the movie and the trailers and everything and then you watch the film and then when it's over you leave. And in fact they hustle you out the door. They don't want yeah. any stragglers sticking around in the theater. Yeah. When I was growing up as a kid, when I was a boy, <laughs> um, you went to a movie you didn't ask what time it started. You went down to the theater and you walked in. Now the movie might be halfway through the film, so you just watched it from that point. Yeah. Then you watched the uh, the second feature, and then yeah. uh, there was something you would always say to somebody next to you: "Is this where we came in?" <laughs> and you would leave. Do you, anybody remember those days? Where you, yes, yeah. I used to do that all the time. There yeah. was a movie theater right near my house. It cost me 25 cents. I'd go in there, just watch whatever movie until it was over, and then watch the beginning after the second feature. Uh, you know, I'd be there for hours and hours by myself. I think, they, I I think in those days they actually made the movies so you could walk in in the middle of them. 
<laughs> you know, really? I'm serious. Yeah, yeah. I loved it. I loved it. It was like the biggest. It was, I just would feel like in my own world. You, you know? remember that, don't you, Jeff? You don't no. remember it, wow. Jeff? Come on, you old fart. I, I you remember it. Time. You don't remember. I did that all the time. What? I'm muted, Jeff. Walk in, <laughs> walk in in the middle of the picture, right? Yeah. I my never parents didn't. Hmm. You never what? what? Never saw those kind of shows. When, when did they do the ratings? Because I remember oh, going really? to see really adult movies. I mean, not X-rated, but like like movies that were pretty adult oriented. When I was like 10, 12 years old, because my mom early seventies. Yeah, my mom would go. Here's five bucks or something. Go see a movie. Get out of my hair. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I can remember well, seeing. I, I think like it was it, was, it, it wasn't the. Yeah. It wasn't the vanishing the, point. Uh, back yeah, in I the uh, back in the forties uh, when I uh, late late for the forties when I grew up as a kid, and then into the fifties, they didn't really rate films because films could only be so much. You know, they they weren't then nobody would play them if they were racy or something like that. You know. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, so the, the the whole idea of ratings came in. I'm trying to remember when. And it had I, to be the uh, like the mid '70s. I think it was the early '70s. I, I, I went in. I I went and saw Shampoo when I was like nine years old. I saw. Uh, I'm thinking. I saw, I'm thinking. I'm thinking the '60s. I'm thinking the '60s. Yeah, was right. well, no one, one, huh? uh, no one cared when I went. No one stopped me. I know. I know. <laughs> I, nobody, I never got carded in any movie I ever went to. Yeah. yeah. I, was I want to say old. it was in the late 60s, probably. I, I'm trying to remember. They Originally, they had... Um, they only, 1968. They only had uh, G for general audiences. Oh, yeah. And then, I PG. think... It's, was it... Oh, yeah. Was it... They had um, X. They had X. Well, they had an X, and they had, an, X, X, and they had X. R. And X, oh, you know, yeah. like for instance, Midnight Cowboy was an X-rated movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was okay. The first one to win an Oscar. Yeah. First one to win an Oscar. But what happened was that all of a sudden the porno people decided, we'll come out with our own. We're not just CD, uh, CDX. We're Triple X. Triple X. Yeah, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Alan. Late nineteen sixty-eight. Huh? Yeah, 1968, the motion picture. You must have looked it up. Yeah, and that, that's when I used to go. That's motion when I used to go. So I think the Association of America established a system on ratings, according to. Now, Google. what was the first film to be PG? They added PG later on, but what was the first yeah. film to be pre PG? PG? PG started in 1972. What film was it done for? The I Flamingo know, Kid. No. no. That was, you know um, the Flamingo know. Kid didn't end up hitting a movie theater until the first PG thirteen was Red Dawn. Really? Red. Because yeah. I heard that it was first. it was Collider. Collider. Uh, no, that it was Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. I saw that in the yeah. that they they actually oh, came what out. What was with... the first? What was the first movie that you ever saw tits in? They okay. said Flamingo Kid King was the first Brody. Well, I don't know. That was some guy yeah, who brought... Yeah, Private Miss Scene Brody. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> no, that was actually... I remember a, a, going to school. I mean, I saw tits in this movie. It was yeah. too hot, man. Oh, oh wait tits, a minute. I, I, I was in Mitchell Brothers Ritz when I was 16. Uh, oh, that was in what year, though? That was... Uh, uh, yeah, in the last century, John. Prime of Miss Jean Brody. Well, the first out. time I ever saw hey. breasts in a movie was some guy brought a projector over in some stag films. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. My, that's my, right. uh, my step, my, you know, my, I told you guys my mom passed away when I was young, so I was in my stepdad. My stepdad was always with his, his girlfriends. Yeah. And I found his porno stash when I was like 14. <laughs> so I, I, I remember one porno, it was called Winnie Bango. <laughs> so Winnie Bango? <laughs> Winnie Bango. And these girls were in a Winnebago mm -hmm. just, you know. Going around. Well, you know, had, you know. Here's the thing. It's very interesting. Uh, <laughs> Brian, you find that one, Tony. Is that is that is that on your list of comics? No, but it's it's kind of fun. <laughs> names, Alex, porn movies, and you mention them. Uh, they uh, it's like this, and they play that dumb music. <laughs> well, I told you, my father was out of work. He taped over me and my mother's General Hospital with dirty uh, with uh, 
channel 63. Me and my mother wanted to watch Friday Soap Cliffhanger. And I get it all ready, tuned it up, we sit down. And next thing you know, I had to tell my mother to go in the kitchen. He went from channel 7 to 63. I said, I thought you were looking for work. He says, I was watching this. I said, mine too. He said, I'm going to kill you, Leo. <laughs> Hey, the good thing is Brian Winnebago has some pictures on YouTube. Really? Yeah, I don't know if it's X-rated. I doubt it. But yeah, well, you know, the, the the whole idea, you know, it used to be porn was illegal. And he, was it, you know, it was just absolutely, absolutely, absolutely legal, illegal. Uh, and uh, you couldn't have porn. Uh, without getting arrested for it. I'm oh, serious. Yeah. It was that bad. But what happened and what changed everything was videotape. Yeah. Now, here's the reason it changed it. It's a very unusual thing. If you took, say, somebody had some porno films, and you took the films in before a judge, and you said, here are the porno films, they could hold them up to the light, and they could see the image. Yeah. But the law wasn't against a latent image which videotape was. Oh, really? And so therefore, when videotape came in, nobody, they couldn't bust them for, for porn. So that's why porn became so so dominant. I bet you they must have sold most of those VCRs, I bet you, Alex, the people wanted to watch dirty Oh, movies. listen, the first thing, yeah, the first right. reason VCRs sold was so people could watch porn. Yes. You would go. You 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 go. You go to a rental place, and they had a whole place in the back room. The most rentals in any video store were adult films. Yeah. Today, nobody cares. You go on YouTube, but not YouTube, but you go online if you know where to go, and you get endless amounts of free porn. You know. I remember getting a VCR. That was a, I was so excited to get that. My brother bought the VCR. We were so excited. No, I, I remember the first time I saw a porno film. This guy, I found this guy. I think he was in Houston, who would come over with a projector and for a certain amount of money would play a certain number of porn yeah. films. And that's the first time I ever saw a stag film. Did you say, do you seem to remember that, uh, Charlie? Yeah, we had, yeah. Huh? Somebody get somebody bring over a projector, had his own movies that he would show. And That's right. That was his bit little business. He them. he would go he would go out to people would hold parties, and then yeah. they would hire this guy to come. It was kind of like the uh, like a like a disc jockey. <laughs> <You know? laughs> when I when I was a kid, my friend found a uh, sixteen millimeter movie under his dad's bed. It was on home. And then when his parents were gone, we, he put it on and we watched it. I was like, oh my. That was the first time I ever saw anything like that. I was in shock. I remember San, San Jose. <laughs> that was R-rated. San, San no, Jose. it wasn't. <laughs> San Jose had a drive-in porno movie back in the 70s. Yes, called, yes, oh, yeah. San Jose you used to see a, it from the highway. They had, yeah, they had one up near Santa Rosa. Between yeah. Santa Rosa and Petaluma, there was a drive in people theater and they started showing porn. Driving by it. And people yeah, were there. Whatever, whatever my we friends jump. lived across the highway and we'd go over there and sit in their front yard and watch the movie. It was, it was quiet. I drive past, I drive past there in the, at, at, at 10 o'clock at night, you know, going up to Santa Rosa to see some friends and there's a big giant vagina on the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Yeah. But I mean, all the good old days, huh? I mean, do you realize? Hey, hey can I tell you a story? A quick yeah, one? yeah, sure. I, 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 in the late, in the mid '80s, I videoed a play I was in, and I made everyone copies. But I, uh, I made, I videoed a Super Eight or an eight millimeter, mm -hmm. and then I, I transferred it to VHS. But I didn't realize that this eight millimeter had porn on it because I wanted to see if I could go from VHS to eight millimeter and I so all the copies I made at the end of the play there was like 20 minutes of porn <laughs> and uh, I gave it to like 15 people and uh, no one ever nobody said ever anything no, no nobody no, ever complained nobody ever said anything <laughs> <laughs> but I was like oh I can't believe I did that. But no one ever That's like Louis C.K. Uh, pulling his penis out in front of three women. Nobody told yeah. him not to. You know, yeah. nobody said stop. 
you know, I mean, John Holmes made a lot of money on Super 8. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. You know, and, and, and the women models, too. That in the well, day. they didn't make a lot of money back then, believe it or not. And that, that was the early days of porn where they weren't pen top dollar. I used dollar. to go to in San Francisco in the Tenderloin where John lives. There used to be places that you can go in and get in a booth and hopefully not slip and yeah. uh, drop quarters in oh, the yeah, machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A yeah. super eight movie would come on. And just as something yeah. really good was happening, it would stop and you'd have yeah. to yeah, put another quarter in. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so you people went to those things too? I Absolutely. see. Okay. What you do is you I wasn't. I wasn't the only one the keeping them alive. So you can get your rag out. And huh? Do what you need to do. You load the thing with quarters, so you got a half hour worth of movie time, so you can take care of your own business in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Was it? Wasn't there a place in the city where you would pay money and there would be like women on the other side of the glass? Oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Well, that yeah, was Chicago. Yeah, in North Beach. Yeah, yeah, in North, in North Beach. Beach. I had friends. My, used to, I never did it, but it always kind of scared the shit out of me. But the, yeah, they the would lust, do that. The lusty lady. Lusty lady. Yeah. Yes. Lusty yeah, lady. Yeah. Yes. That's it. Yeah. I never <laughs> went in there, but I knew somebody who worked there. Really? Did you, did you, you know what happened to that in? place? Uh, the workers uh, took it over, they and then they started hiring anybody, any woman that would want to come in there and work. And then they went out of business. <laughs> but didn't they go on strike? Didn't Leslie Lady go on strike at some yeah. point? Yeah. Right. Yeah, they yeah, they did. I remember that. Yeah. And, and the women that they started hiring were not that attractive, so the place went out of business. I, you know? I remember the strike. They were striking in front of the theater, and there were guys that wanted to get close to these women, so they'd hold up a strike sign and walk with them. Not, I, remember, you know, not be, they, no. I remember when I was a kid, I always thought that, you know, life was quite innocent in those times. And so a bunch of friends of mine and I, there was a theater in San Francisco called the Follies Burlesque. And it was a strip joint. It was a strip theater. They had an orchestra and everything. They had comics that came out and did a little shtick beforehand. And then the strippers would come out and do their... Their strip, and like Mrs. Maisel, <clears throat> yeah, but yes, exactly. And my, um, uh, I, I uh, uh, remember going there with the, some friends. We snuck in because we were underage, and we somehow <laughs> lied about our age. And I don't know. We got in by some miracle, and we're all sitting there watching it, and we couldn't. The one thing that was just. I remember the most about that strip show was we couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> we were, I guess, so embarrassed by being there and by what was happening. The woman would take her clothes off and we just start laughing our heads. People are starting to stare at it. They finally threw us out of the theater. How old are you kids? <laughs> oh, we're, we're, I'm, I'm, I'm 16. Oh, out of here. Okay. But you in said the mean, my father is just we gone. laughed. <laughs> I mean, we couldn't stop from laughing. Because in a way we were very, you know, bothered by it. not bothered by it, but you know, uh, just felt guilty about watching this. Anyway, well, not when I was sixteen, I didn't feel. Guilty but it's at amazing all. how I, we've gone to I that. Felt relieved. How we've gone from <laughs> that to like you know porn on 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 your computer, you know. Yeah. I mean, we've got for somebody to take IA and put Marjorie Taylor Greene in a porn. Oh, that'd be great. Oh, it's probably I'd be on the animal, animal channel. Yeah. yeah. Animal. <laughs> Shark Week. Shark Week. <laughs> yeah, she, she that's like a problem, Ray. Ray. That that really is. That's no, but I I I, I I I I I one time I got high on LSD, and I was up in the country, and I was lying in a bedroom, and in front of me, I relived the first time I ever had sex and I suddenly realized how innocent that moment was in my life that I've never been that innocent since because I didn't know what the hell I was doing you know and and I think that we go from this this amazing innocence to what we have today where there's no innocence anymore right mm -hmm. and no mm -hmm. erections and no nothing at our age yeah. Well, you know, uh, th that's not the point. The point I'm making is what we 
we start out, you know, we start out uh, very innocent, and then we uh, we go to being non-innocent anymore. I think that's you know. true of all kids, though. I mean, not with not just with porn, but everything. Yeah, but I mean, I, when I think how how the times have changed since I was a kid, and that strip show that I went to, and to today. I mean, that strip show, I, I could probably do in any theater here in New York right now, you know. It, women didn't take their clothes off completely. They all had pasties on, you know, and mm -hmm. and uh, they were, they were, they're women I've who actually... I've never watched that, but you notice every two words out of Alex's mouth, Jeff's like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I spent, I spent a third of my childhood searching through National Geographic looking for a, a hooter. The, of course, yeah. of course. Really? Yeah, yeah. oh yeah. Yeah, and I knew I knew the exact uh, volume number and issue number of the good ones, you know. And and then I realized someone, someone, my mother or something removed the National Geographic's that had boobs in them because I looked again, I could not find any. It's like <laughs> he freaking took them out of there. Well, we're back to that again now in Florida, where you know, if there's some book oh, yeah. in a library that even it doesn't meet muster, they pull the book. You know, it's terrible. Uh, so Education they out the window in Florida. Huh? Yep. Education yeah. out the window in Florida. Which reminds me, how many, uh, uh, any bets on what day next week Trump is finally going to get indicted? Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, Thursday. They, yeah, they did, they, this, this thing that uh, Jack Smith sent them was just an <laughs> invite to testify. Yeah, <laughs> you know, which of course I'm surprised he doesn't take because he wants to prove he's innocent. So, well, he won't. He's not going to go. I, I don't blame because him. Obviously, he's not he would innocent. He's a real fool. I mean, he's a real, real fool. But you but but it. he uh, it's going to be it, it. The reason they may not send that you, they have to send that to you before they indict yeah. you to give you an opportunity to yeah. come in and to make your case. You know, yeah. and if you don't choose to, that's fine too. And if you do, they're probably still going to indict you. They might arrest you in the courtroom. It's like they're saying, hey, look, we're going to indict you, but if you can change our mind, you're welcome to come in. Tell us what, what is up, you know? Yeah, yeah, but if you have you, to. If, if you don't show up, they'll pick, they'll get you and bring you in. No, 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 this, no. This, this, wasn't, this wasn't a court order. This is voluntary. Oh, oh, oh. You're, you're yeah, sent, oh, you're oh, sent oh. the, you're sent the invite, the invite to come in. Yeah. That you know, and they say here are the things we're looking at right now. Speak on your behalf, oh. and you might want oh, to speak see. on your behalf. He, they yeah, did well, that with him. The they did to, indicted, th If you don't show up once you're indicted, then they'll come get you. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. But uh, is this one from New York? No, no. This is this is well. This is the, the Washington D.C. This is Jackson, January sixth. Yeah. 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 You know. But by the time did you hear him today? It's like. Uh, they gave it to me on a Sunday night. Can you imagine a Sunday night? Yeah, well, how's that name? Yeah, well, he's such a so religious crazy. person. I hate to bother him yeah. at church. Dude is crazy, crazier and shit. You know? you know. How dare they say it on a Monday night? And uh, also, I'm running for president. They can't do this while I'm running for president. Well, yeah. you, you announced a year ago, so you wouldn't think anybody would charge you with anything, and you That's could right. use that as an excuse. You know? Yeah. So just because you're running for president means you can break any fucking law in the world. What the fuck? It, right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, that's about it tonight, folks. Uh, uh, that I was think. Fun. Huh? Did that you was see? Fun. Yeah. Did you see Adrian come in? No. No. Oh. No, I didn't see. Her. Did yeah. she? She always knows when it's about to end. She opened the door and I was on mute and I told her, "Get out now or you're grounded." <laughs> 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 that's what we were talking about. <laughs> anyway, oh, yeah. hey, hey, listen, uh, thank you very much, Charlie. Appreciate your participation as mm -hmm. always. Mm -hmm. Jeff, your participation also very nice. Thank you, Alan. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see you probably again tomorrow night. Uh, 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 um, uh, uh, Kevin, uh, always nice to see you and a um, uh, good participant. Um, and, and oh, of course, we always got to thank our good friend John Larkin, you know, um, who uh, is in San Francisco in the heart of the uh, 
the uh, what could we call it? The tenderloin. Uh, He's the man on the street. Yeah, yeah, man yeah. On the street, yeah. The man on the street. Uh, thank yeah. you very much, Kevin. Thank you very much, uh, Tony. Good having you here, and of course, Ray. Good having you here too. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. But we'll have another one uh, 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 tomorrow night. Boy, I can't speak the English language anymore. Uh, but there's going to be a, uh, a citizen panel right after this with uh, the uh, intersection with Jack Bishop. You'll call Skype at GabNet Live. Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody.